Whenever we're machining in Parmel, whether it's a roughing operation or a finishing operation, we always want to try and keep the tool overhang as short as possible. The benefit uh, of this is that it reduces the amount of flex in the tool when cutting, which also reduces the amount of vibration. Obviously the less flexing of the tool and the less vibration we have within the tool assembly, the better our surface finish will be. Another benefit of keeping this tool assembly and tool overhang as short as possible is that we can typically increase our speeds and feeds and run the tool path faster, which will ultimately result in a reduced cycle time and the part will be machined quicker. So when we use the optimum overhang for the tool we need to make sure that the holder does not collide with the part. So in Powermill to make sure we have no collisions we can switch on the automatic verification which you can see uh, is displayed on the screen at the moment. Here we have a shank clearance of 0.2 and a holder clearance of 0.2. So this means that Parmel will remove any toolpath segments that collide with the holder using those values. So for this example we're using an interleave constant Z toolpath which is uh, basically a combination of two separate toolpaths joined together a constant Z or waterline style toolpath for the vertical portions and a 3D offset style toolpath for the shallow regions. So here we can see that with the short overhang that large sections of the toolpath have been removed and if we attach the tool to the bottom uh, of this center region we can see why the, the toolpath has been removed to prevent gouges with the holder. So now we have machined with the short tool, we obviously need to go in and remachine again the remaining areas with a longer tool. To help us identify those areas, we can create what's called a collision safe boundary. So based upon the short tool assembly, Parmill will create a boundary limiting that region where there are collisions. We can now use this boundary that we have just created with a longer tool assembly to machine the remaining area. In this example we're going to also use the new boolean boundary operation to separate our collision boundary into shallow and steep regions. To do this we first create a separate shallow boundary for the whole part which you can see on the screen at the moment. So we're just going to rename these boundaries so uh, we can understand what each one is. And now we're going to boolean the collision boundary with the shallow boundary to produce the intersection of the two. So this basic end result will be the shallow region within the collision region. To produce the steep areas within the collision region we just need to repeat the operation but this time we need to subtract the shallow areas from the collision boundary. Now we have two separate boundaries within the collision region in which we can choose the appropriate strategy. So for the steep areas 
we're going to be using a constant Z style strategy. This time we've used a different holder which is a slimmer holder and a tapered holder to allow the tool to get down this time to the bottom of the part without any collisions. And we're going to use the same tool and holder combination with the shallow boundary we created within the collision region in combination with a 3D offset strategy to machine those shallow areas. So there we can see the two, the three tool paths combined to completely machine the core. So we have the majority of the tool path is done with our ideal tool assembly setup with the short tool overhang, which means we can now run the tool path a lot faster and get a improved surface finish because it is more rigid and then we machine the remainder with the longer tool to get down to the bottom of the part.